What is up there SEO pros? Today we learn how to use the Yoast plugin. Alright guys, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Yoast, Yoast is a plugin that you can use on WordPress that will help you optimize your site. So the way you're going to go ahead and do this is you're going to first download the plugin and to do that all you have to do is press add new. Once you're logged in, of course, and you're going to type in Yoast. And there you go. Uh, you will see here it says uh, already active, but if you don't have the plugin, it will say install. Once you install it, you're going to go over to your plugins, which should be on your sidebar. Now, first of all, I'm going to be covering the free version of Yoast. If you want to get the paid version of Yoast, you can. I'll explain to you why I may think it is worth or not worth it. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing. So you're going to scroll down to your Yoast and here it is. You can see it should be activated and what you're going to do is just go click on it. So you press uh, click on it right there. There's the little Y next to it. And here we go. If you see here, it will say features, webmaster tools. First of all, let's look at the dashboard. Here's some notifications that it gives you. Uh, this is where it says to go premium and any problems you might be having. Uh, and then here's the first time configuration wizard. We're going to skip that for now. We'll just do it manually. So over here, if we go to features, you can see I have all these turned on and I recommend you have them turned on as well. Uh, there's really no reason why you shouldn't have these turned on. And if you go to Webmaster Tools, this is where you're going to verify your different Webmaster Tools. Say you have Search Console or Bing Search Console, that kind of thing. Uh, we're not going to be doing that here, but if you do need to do that, you can do it through here. You're just going to grab the code from Search Console. Great, so next we're going to go into Search Appearance. So this is where you're going to really want to start out. Um, first of all, you can see here it says Knowledge Graph. This is if you're going to be wanting to use Schema Markup. I don't use this for my schema markup. I use something else. So if you do want to use this, you're welcome to, but I'm, I'm going to skip that part. This is your title separator. If you want to set this as a default for how your titles get separated, I just leave that like this too because I go ahead and change the titles myself. Next, you're going to go to content type. So I'm going to tell you the things that I do index and the things that I don't index. So I'm just going to leave these in the notes just in case you forget for the description. So there's a couple different common uh, areas for this that people will index and won't index and I'll explain to you why you should or shouldn't. So uh, this is straight out of our SEO audit uh, template. If you want to get this, just head over to chaserunner.com and find the mastermind group and you can go ahead and download this. So anyways, we're just going to go ahead and grab these. So here you go, multiple categories per post. That's obviously irrelevant because that has to do with the audit. But if we go to categories, this is something that you want to be aware of. So if you do have categories indexed and uh, you are a news-based site, that's not going to be a good thing. But in most cases, having categories indexed is fine. So I keep these indexed, mainly because you can rank categories in the search result, whether it be a blog category or a uh, product category. Authors, I know index, mainly because it doesn't make sense for me uh, to, to me to have an extra page where it will show you authors uh, and what they've written if there's already all the posts they've written in categories. So I no index those. Uh, for dates, unless it's a news site, I will no index them because we're using categories instead. Uh, for tags, I will no index them because I don't think that they're very much different than categories, so why would I use them? And then media attachments, I don't index because why do I want to index media attachment pages? Paginated pages, I know index because I feel that they are bloat content and generally are not too helpful. Uh, and then business name included in all titles, I will uh, not do that either. Um, but that has to do with, I think, the readability setting in uh, WordPress. Either way, if we go in here, I'm going to keep posts indexed. Um, I will keep all this stuff in the snippet preview. Pages, I will keep indexed, obviously. We want to be able to index our pages um, and memberships I'm going to no index groups I'm going to no index so this just has to do with uh, the different um, what is it the uh, 
different things that are actually on my site. Uh, so this has to do with like the things that I've installed on this site. So most of the stuff I will no index unless it's like pages or posts. So let me just go ahead and no index all that stuff. So no, no promotions, no footers. Why do I want to index individual pages that have those things? Portfolios, I will not index. Products, I will index. ESS grid example posts, I don't know what any of that stuff is. So I'm going to no index. And custom content type, archives, no. Products, yes. We'll save those changes. And now we're going to go back to the second part, which is the media. So let's go ahead and optimize that. So here we go. Uh, here you can see a media and attachment URLs. It says, we recommend you set this to yes. Uh, redirect attachment URLs to the attachment itself. Uh, so I suppose that's fine. I thought that was actually individual pages, so we'll skip that. Uh, taxonomies, we're going to keep categories indexed. We're going to no index tags. We're going to no index post format. We're going to no index portfolio categories. We're going to no index product categories. Actually, we'll keep those indexed. We're going to no index product tags. Uh, we're going to no index product shipping classes, custom categories, no index, and category URLs. Uh, remove the categories prefix in the URLs. We want to keep those, so we'll save changes. Next, we're going to go to archives, disable author archives, disable date archives. All right, next we're going to go to breadcrumbs. We're going to enable breadcrumbs, because why not? Unless your theme already comes with breadcrumbs, then why would we want to enable that? If you're not familiar with breadcrumbs, they're basically those little things that you see uh, on a website that let you know where you're at. So if we go look at something like uh, Yoast or, or whatnot, you'll see that these are breadcrumbs right here. So it's helpful for people to know where they're at that they can click on rather than just a URL. Cool. So next we're going to go to RSS and we'll just keep this default. Next we're going to go to Search Console just so I can show you it. This is obviously where you would authenticate Google Search Console. I don't know why there's two for the general and the Search Console one. It's kind of weird. Social. This is if you're going to be uh, updating your organization markup. If you set that in the beginning, you would just put your different URLs. We will we use schema manually. So if you want to learn how to set up your schema markup, uh, make sure you head to the link in the description. You can learn how to do that. Tools. We're going to skip because there's nothing really here that we need. And premium. This is what we're going to talk about next. So the best part about this tool is the auto redirects. I think it's $60 one time fee for this tool. And what it does is it lets you um, redirect pages automatically if they've been changed, if the URL has been changed or if there's a 404, it will detect that and tell you that. Other than that, the social previews and the multiple focus keywords and the premium support, I would pretty much just ignore all of those. For the social previews, we use a different plugin called WPSSO, which I will show you how to set up in a separate tutorial. But it works a lot better than the OG data that Yoast gives you. So other than the redirects, I don't think Yoast is really worth getting. And honestly, you could probably find another plugin that will do this. But this alone right here, uh, the redirect manager is really nice to have. So I'm not going to buy it because it's not really worth it to me, but you're welcome to get it if you would like to get it. So that's it, guys. Um, also, for the sorry, I forgot to mention the multiple key focus keywords. This is really silly, and honestly, I do not think that you should even use this to help optimize your page. The basic function of Yoast works really well. I'll show you how it works if we go into pages. And say we were to go into one of the pages, like about Chase. It already gives you pretty good estimation data, which you should really use with a grain of salt um, once it loads. Not sure why it's taking so long. Maybe we'll refresh it. Okay, so Yoast is not wanting to load for me for some reason. Um, but say it did load, it would give you a, an estimation metric for the plugin telling you what you should add to your page and so on and so on. Um, other things that you might want to use within Yoast uh, are something like canonicals, uh, the social, like I said, I completely ignore because I use a different plugin for that. And um, 
The canonicals within Yoast, which you set in here, or the no index tags, uh, if you don't know how to do those things, um, I would suggest possibly taking the beginner to advanced SEO course where I cover in more detail how to set that sort of stuff up and sort of what to look out for around that, which you can find on the website as well under chasewriter.com courses and then beginner to advanced SEO course. So that's it for today. Uh, let's see if we have any comments. looks like we might have a few. Uh, not sure why this chat's cut off. Let me bring that down a little bit. Swoopy Doopy says, I tried to get a job as an SEO sp specialist and I was more than skilled to do SEO for the agency. Uh, was too young. I'm 70, by the way. Feels bad, man. Got contacted by a recruiter too. Nice. Yeah, so I started SEO when I was about 20, I think. So uh, I totally know how you feel, man. Um, it seems like people who are older in this industry definitely make more money for knowing less. And um, that's sort of just how it is these days. But, uh, you know, that's sort of the thing is I think in the future, people who are younger will be taking a lot more uh, technical jobs uh, around SEO or online marketing because generally they are able to learn the stuff faster. They have more time to learn it than people who are uh, generally older. Uh, Hydra says, what's good, Chase? What's up, man? All right, guys, so that's it for today. Now you know how to optimize f your Yoast plugin and whether or not you want to get the Yoast Pro. Um, for future videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it and hit the like button so I can know to make more videos like this. So until I see you all next time, happy SEOing. Thank <music> you.